As time progresses, the barrier between anime and memes is slowly disappearing, which is why memes started appearing on PewDiePie's channel. Shout out to him, by the way, linked his channel in the description. This video's in his honor. So I don't think anyone should be too upset if I do this from time to time, especially being that honest descriptions are probably my most requested series. So let's do this. An honest description on my top memes of January 2018. Sometimes memes lay dormant and stuff, so therefore these memes didn't necessarily begin this month, but these were were the ones that resurfaced and mattered to me. I'm kind of new to this style video, but I don't mind making this a monthly series, so please like and subscribe. Hope you're ready for the sarcasm and the deep philosophy of the memes. Let's start strong with the PewDiePie chair meme. The only meme in history of meme kind that's received a perfect score from Meme Daddy, and probably totally not because it had anything to do with him, because Meme Daddy would never be partial on meme review, the holiest of YouTube series and just like PewDiePie himself, who despite his time serving in the Third Reich, he's the most popular and beloved channel on the face of the tube. And there's something he's doing very right, and only now do I finally know what it is. It's only since the whole adpocalypse thing that he, uh, accidentally triggered that I actually finally became a fan. And now, I understand the change. Remember how Goku pushed himself to a level even FURTHER BEYOND to become a Super Saiyan, thereby increasing the mass of his luscious golden hair? Well, you think it's a coincidence that when PewDiePie grew his beautiful golden nature's waterfall of a beard, all of a sudden his content's become one of YouTube's best hands down. And that's simply because he's constantly telling himself, But can you do this? Of course, it wasn't merely a ploy to market his wonderful, extraordinary high-quality chairs for only $3.99. I repeat, incredible, wonderful chairs for only $3.99. Do you hear that? Basically a steal. Hashtag not sponsored. Of course, it wasn't a ploy. And of course, it's not a coincidence that the chair meme took place at the same time as his Chuck Norris level beard. Sorry fam, Norris wasn't a January meme. I'll cover him another time. But it's because the chair meme is PewDiePie's power up phrase to ascend to a super Sweden. So next time you're feeling down in the dumps and you need something to pick you up, Lord PewDiePie the meme master is looking out for you. And when someone's insulting you, whether it be personal or in front of a girl you like, just wait for the perfect opening and attack with a but can you do this? That's an auto KO. And someday you'll be able to ascend to Super Sweden as well. And that's only for $3.99, ladies and gentlemen. What a wonderful deal. It's a borderline steal, only $3.99. And your greatest desires will all be realized. Hashtag could be sponsored. Hashtag share to get PewDiePie to see this video, please. Next, we have the Ugandan Knuckles meme. The culmination of mankind's perfection is finally here with the most brilliant trolling piece of shit awesome meme in a long time. The do you know the way meme is extra brilliant because of its it's twofold awesomeness. Very few times do jokes of any kind not use an individual as the punchline. In fact, that's why pranks on YouTube, besides being some of the worst type of media out there and mostly probably fake, they still get crazy freaking views where if they're real, they're douchebags. And if they're fake, they're also douchebags. It's like a win-win situation. At last, we have a counter. And the counter is the most SJW meme known to the internet. That's right. A swarm of genderless little red assholes that took over every VR chat and conversation on social media. But but you gotta feel bad for them because they just want to know the way. And they get their point across too, asking every creature they happen upon if they know the way. And they also occasionally dub someone their queen, which is the first online sexual harassment known to mankind where the victim is worshipped. That's right, the Ugandan Knuckles tribe care. Everyone out there in the real world is full of hate, but they don't realize something beautiful. They don't realize that with the power of memes, everyone is united and brought together. Do you know the way meme is a tragic metaphor for the mass of people taking shelter online from their issues in the real world. And despite all that, they join together to form a society. Do you know the way meme is the pinnacle of warmth of humanity? Everyone's accepted. Either that or it's a cult, but I like the first way better. And of course, when any pure piece of art, like the Ugandan Knuckles meme, that gets popular enough, some people are gonna call it racism. Thanks, PewDiePie. Not that I know what's racist about a group of little weirdos doing sexual harassment in some VR chat clucking and spitting like Ugandan people do. We're learning about their their culture. On the contrary, Uganda should be honored. This is the first time their country's been relevant since, like, the Wrath of Khan. You know, Genghis Khan. And therefore, the internet says you're welcome. Next, we have the Tide Pod meme. They say it's a coincidence. They say one thing has nothing to do with the other. But I think it's totally fair to blame Logan Paul for the resurfacing of the Tide Pod meme. I mean, recently everyone's been blaming the guy for everything, so like, why not? This actually fits, kinda. I don't know who came up with the genius meme that this poison is deadly detergent looks like food, but whoever did clearly understood the true depths of the human
human mind and the true depths of the internet. And he knew the right time to strike. Mostly because the only people dumb enough to eat Tide Pods fall into one of two categories. A, they're Logan Paul fans that blindly follow internet trends, especially if the word challenge is in the name. Dab on the challenges, boys. And reason B, they're Logan Paul fans who figure eating enough of them <laughs> might get them in one of his vlogs. You know, as clickbait. Too dark? Too dark. Next, we have the somebody touch a my spaghetti meme. Some memes go deep, some are dark and mysterious, some represent death, and some are just to give everyone a life lesson. Don't fucking touch someone else's spaghetti! A crisis that's been crippling the nation for the last 84 years. It's those goddamn alt-right homophobic spaghetti touchers, is what you thought I would say. That's what this meme is leading you to believe, but if you look at this meme closely, who is the relatable one of the two, and who is the one getting parodied? That's right. The meme isn't Goof McFuckles, yes, that's his name now, that got upset that someone touched his spaghetti. No, the meme is the toucher, and how he, or she, suffered a horrible malicious microaggression toward his, or her, sexuality. Some people identify as spaghetti touchers. Who are you to tell them not to touch your spaghetti? Which is exactly why this meme was overused to the point of its death. It's dull and dark level death. It was warping and deforming, not the poor oppressed minority group of spaghetti touchers, which was the initial purpose, but Goof McFuckles himself. And to everyone who laughs at this meme, thinking that Goof is the one in the right? You're part of the problem too. Next meme. Skedaddle, skedoodle, your dick is now a noodle meme. This is not a very famous meme because its depth is limited. This is one of Meme Daddy's least favorite memes of all time and he ranked it a one out of 10. And that was simply because he saw the simplicity in this meme instantly. Obviously, this meme is about a wizard casting a magic spell to turn your dick into a noodle, implying that before the wizardry took place, your dick was no mere floppy noodle, but it was Dwayne Johnson level. That is when Dwayne's looking at a hot guy. Implying that you are staring at something you desire. The simple philosophy embedded within this meme is that when you find something seemingly perfect, even erection level perfect, it'll just become a shitty meme, making your dick a noodle. Yeah, that was a pretty obvious one. Let's just move on. Let's move on to everyone's favorite topic, the Logan Paul memes. Yeah, so when there's a massive controversy going on online about any subject, in this instance, my pal Logan, using the worst thumbnail in the history of YouTube, I'm sure his lesson is totally learned. But the bottom line is, I don't want to see a thumbnail like this again. I don't want to ever see Logan with that stupid look on his face with that fucking hat. Never again. God damn it. That is unless Logan's stupid face in the hat becomes a meme. Which it has, praise the internet. I don't want to go into too much detail on the philosophy of this meme here, simply because <laughs> I'm working on an honest descriptions for each of Logan Paul's Japan vlogs. That'll be a doozy of a video that I'm really looking forward to finishing. But it's in production, so feel free to subscribe to know when it comes out. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a brutal one. Next meme, Pop Team Epic. Nothing like a living, breathing anime meme for our wonderful anime community to jerk off to because of its originality, despite it being some of the fucking worst humor on the face of the planet, which is exactly why, as far as an anime goes, I wouldn't rate it all that highly. But as far as a meme, though, <laughs> this thing's the master. For those of you who don't know, this anime is about these two characters who act so idiotically and moronically, maybe you'll actually find them funny on a relatable level. Maybe you enjoy how they essentially recycle two freaking skits throughout the entire goddamn show, with the first one being their lovely middle fingers, and the second photoshopping their stupid smug ass faces on any permutation of creation to the point that Pickle Rick starts to feel too normal. As I've mentioned, this anime is nothing groundbreaking, but as a meme, the depth of human wisdom Pop Team Epic teaches you is like none other. It teaches you the power of a true friend. If one morning you wake up and you're, I don't know, what's a normal thing that'll happen to someone when they wake up? I don't know. They become a living piece of toast. Yeah, that sounds normal. You would probably have a horrible, dreary life. That is, unless you have a friend who's also another piece of toast beside you, where you can give people the finger and despite it looking awkward and cringy, with your true friend next to you as someone who's got your back through thick and thin, when you give your awkwardly cringy middle finger to someone in a true friend's eyes, it will look badass. But the true best aspect of a true friend, and I'm sure all of us have experienced this in the past, is the stubbornness competition, where you or your friend have to prove your awesomeness by the ability to remain unaffected by the other's actions, like true friends do. When that happens, Pop Team Epic teaches you exactly how your gratitude is supposed to be shown, by pummeling them to oblivion. If they mind, they aren't a true friend at all. Pop Team Epic shows you the way. Next is the Kylo Ren big boy meme. 
you thought the last time you'd see a shot like this would be in one of those ancient kung fu movies that were cringy, and they were cringy before the word cringe was even invented. But no, Kylo Ren has the right garb. He is the proportionate level of thick, with at least four C's, and the internet understood the big boy meme philosophy instantly, gracing the world with one of the most tragically beautiful abstract memes of all time. Because not only does this powerful meme deliver the message that one shouldn't be ashamed of their physical appearance, but they should embrace it. That's how thick started after all. You know, started with one fat chick that wasn't very popular and all sad, and then she owned it. She developed thick, and the world is now a much happier place thanks to that, especially for the thickies. And this meme has a fallback plan for you, because you always need a plan B, and it's just like a Star Wars meme to tell you what to do in case of an emergency. If you aren't up to the task to develop a new world religion like thick, the Kylo Ren meme is telling you to get over it, because if you look at the full image of the meme zoomed out, Kylo Ren in that position is actually Bennett Foddy. So just get over it, fam. And always remember, don't ride the snake. As a quick mention, I'd like to talk about the Doki Doki Literature Club memes. It's a sweet dating sim that I recommend to all my friends that just want to take their mind off things. It's such a common, soothing game, I can even easily recommend it to people that would get easily emotionally disturbed. What's adorable about these memes are that it has something for everyone. Each of the four love interests gets her own meme, whether it's just Monica, or just Monica, or just Monica, or just Monica, just Monica, just Monica, just Monica, 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 just Monica, Buff Natsuki, very mentally stable Yuri, or if you're just hanging out with Sayori. Plus, why these memes are truly special is because they're there to teach the internet about how your everyday dates fall into one of these four categories. But I, um, I'm already working on a full honest description video on each of the four Doki Doki girls. I don't know if it'll be out before or after this one. I believe after. Um, if it's around already, link in the description. If not, feel free to subscribe, because it's coming, boys. And the final meme I would like to talk about is the Earth Chan meme. For the most part, when a meme takes hold, it's one of several methods. Either it's over a controversy, over someone acting stupid on the internet, over a sentiment that we've all experienced, over SpongeBob, or over a presidential campaign. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Trump's a meme, but um, not a January meme. So, sorry bros. Very seldom do you have outside malicious parties infiltrating our wonderful and luscious meme culture to implant a meme full of terrible and dark secrets, meant to pull the wool over all of our eyes and keep us all in the dark about the truth. But once the meme's implanted, it's almost impossible to unravel its true secrets. Because if the meme is good, the internet will serve as its own worst enemy and perpetuate the meme until the source becomes muddled. There's only one surefire way to get an implanted meme to truly blow up, and that's to make it a waifu lolly. The government is using Earth Chan as a meme to be a reverse psychology to try to convince us that the world is actually round. But I'm not flat. That's all cute. But if this video gets deleted, it and my channel goes dead. I'm telling you now why. The Illuminati is trying its best to hide from us that the world is actually flat. And before you say that, but Nux, the Flat Earth Society are a bunch of weirdo wackos. Oh, I know you fools. And that's because the Flat Earth Society are members of the Illuminati trying to sound like idiots to fool the world into thinking Flat Earth is moronic. Just like with Earth Chan. But I think I've said too much already. I don't want to put myself in any more danger unraveling further secrets of the Flat Earth theory to you. It's too dangerous because because Google knows everything that's going on here. And obviously Google is a member of the Illuminati. Why do you think the Google Chrome logo is three sixes? That's right, the Illuminati practices Satan worship. This is no secret and they've been doing it for generations. Now feel free to subscribe for next month's meme where I totally dismantle 9-11 Chan and California Forest Fire Chan. But what's this? I think we have time for a bonus meme! The isopod meme. Yeah, I'm not counting the isopod meme in my top memes of January. That's why it's in the bonus area. And that's because while it's just as deep as all the others, it was clearly a trap devised by the feminazis to lower the world into a trap where, now that abortions are legal in many places, they decided there's only one way to further achieve their whammonhood and go one step further. Because after you're finished with your baby, which is the representation of the isopods, into the sea. Yeah, we all see your ugly intentions, using isopods for your own desires. But let's not dwell on this one, because it's definitely not in my top, just got the bonus spot. My theory is, speaking of memes, that now that you've reached the end of the list, you are the physical representation of this meme here. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed my wackiest video I ever made. Not sure what I was thinking when I started writing it, but to be honest, I think I can improve this structure video. If you enjoyed, feel free to 
leave a like and subscribe. Of course, also let me know if you want this to be a monthly series where I honestly and accurately describe all the top memes of the month like I intend to actually do, depending on your feedback. Also, let's not forget, shout out to PewDiePie, a rather unknown channel that can use all the help it can get. Link to his channel in the description. Let's get him to 70 million, fam. He legit deserves it. Make sure he sees this video, because he probably can use the confidence boost, you know, with the whole Holler army slowly taking over. Link to his Twitter also in the description, as well as mine. Let us know your thoughts of the video. Also, don't forget to buy his awesome chair for only $3.99. Link in the description as well. I got your back, Beards, and I dedicate this video to you. And now remember, everyone, don't forget to smile.